Compressing the golf ball is something we all want to do with our irons because we know it is the holy grail to hit longer, straighter golf shots, especially with our irons. Hi everyone, my name is James Robinson. Welcome back to Get Good at Golf. If you want to do that, make sure you do hit that subscribe button and throw a like on this video. Today we're talking irons and we're talking about how to compress your irons, why we compress them and the simple science behind compressing those irons. Because we've all heard the term compression, we've all heard make sure you hit down on the ball, make sure you take a nice divot. But what does it really mean, you see? So I've got an eight iron here, and this eight iron has how much loft on it, Chris? 34. 34 degrees of loft with an asterisk by it because we're not entirely sure. But that 34 degrees of loft is a static loft on this club. So that generally is the angle between the ground and the loft. If I wanted to hit this club further than a standard eight iron, so if I try and deliver this club with the static loft of 34 degrees, You'll see I hit a nice high eight iron just towards that green, although it's gonna finish a little bit short. That's the shot that a lot of golfers play, and that's the shot where you can see with the turf interaction, we've not taken a divot at all. So we haven't compressed the ball there, we've picked it off the turf. That means that you're never really gonna be that consistent with your distances. You're never gonna be that consistent with the club face control because actually compressing the golf ball comes with more benefits than distance, more benefits than taking a nice, sleek, sexy divot. It comes with the benefits of squaring that club face up a lot more consistently. Let me explain. So what you'll see when you compress the golf ball is actually a couple of things with that club face being square. So as I have that club face nice and square towards the target at 34 degrees, what I'm gonna do here is sneak that handle forward at address. So what I've done there is I've de-lofted that club statically already so that's now sat at 25 26 degrees with the handle being forward and having forward shaft lean i've actually got a little bit more weight on my left side so as i take that club away the club's now in a nice position to get loaded into the top of the backswing here as i then rotate and get my weight back into my left side you can see how that handle works forward my hips start rotating nicely and the key here and the science behind compressing the golf ball isn't what you do with this. You could almost throw this out the window and train this just with your body. The key is what you do with your hips. How do your hips compress a golf ball? You see, if I'm at the top of the backswing and my hips don't rotate, my hips slide laterally, what happens is as I come through, there's nowhere for my hands to go. I'm not gonna pierce my hip here. So the hands actually work up and out and you can see we have that static loft back on the eight iron. Essentially what we want to do is make sure that as we come down into that ball, that left hip moves out the way. So there's plenty of room for your hands to come through. We can then get that forward shaft lean. And you can see that club face is working nice and square because it's behind the hands. If you imagine the analogy of a car towing a trailer or a caravan or just a big pile of weeds from the allotment to the tip, Chris. If that car is in front of the trailer, the trailer is always under control, going around the corners, going around roundabouts or intersections if you're in America, it's always under control. If for some reason that car slams the brakes on around a corner, so remember the car is your hands and the trailer is the club head, the car slams the brakes on, the trailer can't stop, the trailer doesn't have brakes, so it then becomes out of control and jackknifes. That's not what you want when you're going from the allotment, is it Chris? It is not. So we want to make sure that the hands, the car, are always in control and always ahead of that club face. So that club face is always under control. And as you'll see, when you come through the golf ball here, that club face is still square to your spine angle. It hasn't jacked knifed here and done this, which we see so often. We see this release so often because people don't want to hit it right. So we over-release the club. So that compression that we go back to is actually giving us so many more benefits than just hitting the ball a little bit lower, more penetrating and longer. Look at that for a ball flight it becomes a lot more consistent. And that time after time after time is essentially what we're all trying to do. You can see I've taken a nice lengthy divot there out of this lush fairway. And don't be scared to do that. The golf ball there was here and I've struck it really nicely down into the turf. You'll see the divot's actually pointing slightly left of my target because that club works around the body. We spoke earlier about the hip moving out the way. The hands don't then work this way. The hands work around the body. So it's okay for the club to exit ever so slightly left. And that's how you compress the golf ball. That's the science behind compressing the golf ball. And that's how you in 2024 are gonna get good at golf. <laughs> 